Good afternoon. How are you doing? I would like to talk to you about big data and the future that we will create. This, now that we have these smartphones, this doesn't look very impressive. But this was the first computer that I used. It was a, the Macintosh Classic back in 1990. And it was the coolest thing that I've ever seen in my life at the time. The coolest thing. You could interact with the screen. You could it, play with the keyboard. You had, it had a mouse. It was like alien technology to me. <laughs> and this little thing you see here is a slot where a floppy disk will go in. No, no pen drives, no smart DVDs, a floppy disk. A square, black, flexible disk that if you would bend too hard, it would break. You would lose all the information. And it held 1.44 megabytes of information. So you have a perspective of that. I would need eight floppy disks to save this presentation that you're about to see. <laughs> Eight of them. Okay. So, what is big data? Big data is just data of very large size, typically uh, to the extent that, it mani that its manipulation and management presents significant logistic challenges. This is a definition from the Oxford English uh, Dictionary. Also, we have different qualities of big data. Those qualities are volume, it's just like the size of the data, velocity, the speed of change of the data, variety, it's just like data that comes from different types of sources, different types of documents, and also veracity, it's just like how certain or, or uncertain we are about what the data is telling us. So organizations that use big data they mainly focus on internal sources of information, just like transactions, log data, emails. But not many organizations are looking at other data, like social media. They're not looking at audio, not looking, just a few of them are looking at photo and videos. This is some information, so you, you have a perspective of how much data we generate. The, the human species. This, all this information is in 60 seconds. So what happens in 60 seconds online? 72 hours of videos are uploaded to YouTube in 60 seconds. Every 60 seconds. In Facebook, 41,000 posts every second. Not every minute, every second. 1.8 million likes Three, 350 gigabytes of data every minute. Google has about 2 million searches on 60 seconds. This is hard to grasp how much is going on. Since this presentation started, you probably contributed to this big data, just like talking to people over WhatsApp or just tweeting about the event. Right now, probably a couple minutes since we started, you are adding to this multitude of information. So, to put it into perspective, all the information that was held in 2013, 2013, almost well, four years ago, if you would take all that information and if you burn it into DVDs, follow me? And you put those DVDs one on top of each other, it would reach the moon and back. And it's estimated that by the end of the decade, it would reach Mars. To put it more into perspective, all the work of Shakespeare fits a thousand times on a DVD in text file. A thousand times. If you would take all the information in the Library of Congress of the United States and burn it into DVDs and do the same exercise of putting one on top of the other, it would be as high as a one-story house. In the last couple of years, 
over 90% of all the data created by the, the human species has been created only in the last couple of years. This represents an exponential growth. We're here at the beginning, at the end of 2009, beginning of 2010, we had about three exabytes of information. An exabyte is a quintillion bytes. By 2020, it will grow from four exabytes to 40,000 exabytes. So, if we believe this quote from Peter Drucker, who is the father of modern uh, management, if we believe this quote that says, what gets measured gets improved, if we believe that, if we buy into that idea for now, why hasn't our quality of life increased exponentially since 2010? Think about it. You remember, seven years back, how life was, how life is now. You have seen how much grows, has grown in that time. Has your quality of life improved that way? Many tools have been developed that help to help people explore and analyze this big data. They're free, it's open, it's, you have free classes, it's more and more available to anybody to learn and use, but still, not an exponential growth in quality of life. This is an interesting statistic. Less than 1% of all this big data is being analyzed. The statistic back in 2015 was 0.5%, half of a percentage of the data has been analyzed. A big problem with big data is big data analysis, is knowing what to concentrate on. When you have so much information, so much of it is noise. We don't know what to concentrate on in order to, to obtain value from it. But let's, let us think. We have all this data. The world is every day being measured more and more. More tools have been developed so we can use them to analyze the world surrounding us. What should we concentrate on? What should we concentrate on to impact the, the way that we live our lives, to impact our quality of life? I propose to you a couple of things. Things that are needed all over in Latin America. I propose to you what matters most. And these are just three examples. Preventing crime. Crime is a big problem in Latin America. Improving health, I don't even have to start on that. Everybody, everybody knows, yeah, I don't have to give examples. <laughs> Taking care of the environment. Would you agree with me that these are important issues? Yes. yes? Imagine that we could use big data to prevent crime from happening. Imagine that we can use tweet feeds, that we can use posts, that we can use information, satellite information, to track hotspots where there's largest probability where crime is going to happen before it happens. This is not only possible, this is being done today. This is information from, it's called a predictive policing. This, it's a, a, it's, this picture is from an article in the Vancouver Metro in Canada. These are actual hotspots where types of crimes are about to happen. And what the, the city does, they send police, they have a plan to prevent crime from happening. It's happening not only in Canada, it's happening all over in California, it's happening in London, England. This is today. Let's say health is a big issue. Let's say, let's concentrate on health. Apple and IBM, they just form an alliance where the Apple Watch is gonna be monitoring your information from your body. Your body 
is going, it is already a source of big data. Heart rate, the amount of sleep, how many steps you take in a day. All this information is going to be available to your doctor. Your doctor is going to be able to log into your data and extract value from it and tailor a specific plans, specific health plans, specific treatment according to your, the big data that your body is generating. There are apps being developed as we speak that track, it's an app for, I'm a psychologist, I'm a cognitive psychologist, so I, obviously I think, when I think of health, I think of mental health. So we are, if some people are developing apps that when you log into the app, it logs into your Facebook account, your activity in social media, and it, it has ways of detecting if you, for example, you have, you suffer from bipolar de uh, depression, it can track your moods according to your activity in social media. And it can predict, it will be able to predict when your next episode is going to happen and have in, just basically have an intervention in time before the crisis comes. Let's say we care about the environment. Well, at the University of California, San Diego, they're using satellite feed, they're using sensors and trees, they're using Twitters, uh, Twitter uh, feeds, they're using what people post in, on Instagram and in, on Facebook, and they are trying to detect when wildfire starts. And they, they're doing it at such an accuracy that in a couple of seconds, when the fire starts, they can tell authorities that it's, that it's started. And not only that, using all this information from all the sources, it's uh, mapping where the fire is going so they can prevent it from uh, spreading farther. So I want to leave you with this question. What matters to you? What value do you want to take out of big data? So how will you impact the world through big data? Thank you for your attention.